prototype, and I'm thinking, too bad, I've, I've done something nice and I can't save it. <laughs> so it, this is a completely unimplemented saving and loading. And, um, like I said, there is actually undo redo, but it's only working for certain operations. It's not working, for example, for um, transformations. And, <coughs> Any, any change in the text object is not being um, recorded and done. So, there's a margin for improvement. Another thing that's, that's going to be a lot of work is the uh, shape tool, editing um, the past on the, on the canvas. I can probably use, reuse a lot of um, work from Iconomatic, which or it's already happening for this version of Wonderbrush. For example, I pulled the, um, the color picker code not from the original Wonderbrush, but from the Iconomatic uh, version, and I still um, changed a lot of it because even in Iconomatic, it's not all layout aware. And yeah, you can send it. Yeah, yeah, I should patch that. Um, true. Yeah. One question. Mm -hmm. Is, uh, Star in the uh, right and the lower left, like some bluish below the one. Yeah, yeah, that's actually the outline. So if I, um, but it's intended. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you take the, where is it? Oh, uh, yeah. Stroke. You see in the, in the profile, you feel like stroke. Yeah. 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 It, it has, it has, it has yeah. the outline color. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering why it doesn't pick the object in, the, in here. Because ah, it's the layer. It, It's, it's very incomplete. If I move this past the Gaussian blur, you see that it actually is an outline. Oh, that's right. Yeah, and that's another thing that, that's, I, that I wanted to do with the, um, with the Wonder Brush is that it has uh, global, global style references. This is something that I did in, uh, in Iconomatic. If I um, change properties of this guy here, mm -hmm. like for example, uh, that maybe. Um, and both of these objects pick up the change. Mm -hmm. And um, same for the color and everything, of course. Um, yeah, but I wanted to take this even farther, but uh, it's, going to be, it's probably too difficult to explain this right here without actually seeing what it means. Yeah, uh, other questions? About the new text rendering, did you implement the text? It's, it's all from scratch. It actually comes from um, from, from my job project. I had to. <coughs> I was facing this problem that um, I'm writing an, uh, an SWT based application in Java, and I don't know if you guys know what SWT is. Basically, a toolkit, a widget toolkit, standard widget toolkit, SWT. Um, which is which is a native implementation on each platform. So um, in Java, you have these uh, these proxy objects, Java objects that you interface with, and they all they have the same interface. Obviously, you, uh, you interface with the SWT um, application programming interface, and then the platform like there's a separate SWT version for each platform, and it implements uh, the API. And it's I think it's similar to WX widgets, right? I think WX widgets, that's the, kind of the same thing as yeah. the so uh, yeah, yeah, it tries to use native I think it's native platform. widgets on each yeah. platform, right? And um, the problem was that I'm, I'm doing a, a paged text application, so it has these pages and the text on the page, and um, SWT was not optimized for having precise text layout. It used, um, like what you usually see on screen is that the, the text is hinted and uh, scaled to read, be readable on the screen. And for a paging application, you have different requirements. You uh, need the, the text width to be precise, to be the same as when printed. And um, the SWD didn't support that, so I need to provide my own text engine. And, um, and then I had all this code already written, so. Um, so it has multiple type? It's free type. 
it's, uh, uh, it's based on this article that Maxim Shemanamev once wrote about the font rasterization. If some of you guys remember, he made this article about uh, subpixel um, uh, rendering and doing <coughs> completely freely scalable text on the x-axis. So it's, it's hinted vertically. If, if you look closely, um, oh, it doesn't work. <laughs> See up here, it's it's crisp here, it's crisp here, and it's not crisp here. So it's um, all those letters are um, fitted to the pixel grid vertically, but not horizontally. Horizontally, there is the correct um, width that it should have according to the design of the font, and um, it's what I needed for the paging application. So I pulled in all this code and. Um, it's not completely that the, the text rendering is not only threaded actually, because the font cache isn't yet, so we have to rewrite a lot of stuff in the font cache to make it really threaded. And um, so, okay, the whole the, the actual layer is just uh, basically I talk about SWT already has it's, it's, it's a class called text layout. And you give it a string and width and, and you give it the style and so different uh, fonts for ranges of text and produces a layout. So we had to replicate all that API and that's basically why it already is good. And we can't use the contact uh, from the app server on the show. Yes, um, I uh, thought about that, but uh, I'm not quite sure if thinking about it, um, I thought maybe the app server code actually has a bug in it, uh, we can tell you about. when the text is rotated because then it uses the vector um, font cache. And I'm not even sure if that actually works from multiple threads. To do some hard to explain uh, stuff right now. So this is the reason to use that code. Yeah, I should fix it in the app server and then. Um, well, certainly if, if I do any fix a thing with the uh, color picker code and the one over should up in the upstream of those patches. On the roadmap. The roadmap. The roadmap is just to, to find some time in between your work. And uh, it certainly had the Lino was um, motivated to do the queue port, so and it happened that I wanted to do this presentation in, in the ISA. And so I, I really uh, brought myself to, to, to still cold in the, in the evening, right? So usually at 6 o'clock, um, I'm done with work and then it's family time and then. Once the little one is in bed, um, I have the choice of maybe watching a movie or just reading something, or I go back to the computer and keep on coding. So it's not something that works for it Have you considered uh, starting a Kickstarter uh, project and <coughs> see so if there's a lot of one thing my, my current job project, but I'm heavily involved in that project. Yeah, maybe that is over sometime. If it's over, if it doesn't play out, then I, I'm certainly I should certainly consider the options. But, um, maybe that's an interesting option. But, um, at the moment, I, I, I really can't run the, the team. Uh, I'm no. really, no, no. really sure. sorry about them. So. Real life comes first. Ooh. <laughs> what? Real life? <laughs> Real life, yeah, explain. <laughs> except, except from cyborgs. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm actually quite curious uh, how this job project works out because we have a um, closed beta starting um, in one week and it will be really interesting how the feedback is to the application and and we will see how much work we still have if we like maybe it's just bug fixes that we have to do maybe this maybe the, the, the beta testing crew um, can regress some concepts of the, of the software because they're presented in the wrong way and we have to change some, some things around and it means maybe you need a lot of work and um, yeah, and, and then we will see how, how good it's received. And if it's a total failure, and um, <coughs> then I need to look for new options. But uh, I'm actually hopeful that it will pay out, right? And, and people will buy it. <coughs> <coughs>